Hey everybody, Jack Close Painting here with a new tutorial and I've got the brand new Iron Father from Games Workshop. And we're going to be trying something new. I'm going to be experimenting with some cool colors, doing some alternating colored light sources to give this guy kind of a cyberpunk feel. And uh, I'm by no means an expert at this, so I'm mostly just kind of forest gumping my way through all this and you guys are along for the ride, but hopefully it comes out all right. Starting off with some dark purple, and the idea here is that I want two different directional light sources of different colors that are reflecting on his black armor with some high contrast to give him that cyberpunk style. So I'm starting off with this dark purple and I am spraying at an angle from the left up. So it's a low light source pointed upwards that has a Kind of purple pinkish color to it you know that sort of blue and pink neon light source uh palette that you see a lot in cyberpunk so i'm just making sure that i'm spraying from the same direction on uh, the right side with our colors then i'm going to go up to magenta which is going to give us that pinkish color and again i'm going to go from the bottom up on this one side of the model creating this perspective of color from this imaginary light source that we have it's going to be like slightly off of his base creating a pinkish glow effect on his armor and i'm just highlighting that up and picking out a few different places just making sure that all of my spring is going the same direction so that way we don't have anything off kilter after that i'm going to go to dark blue and we're just going to do the exact opposite so i'm coming from the right side pointed at a downward angle, and we're gonna build up our blues on all of those sides so that as you turn the model and look at it from different directions, you see there are multiple light sources of different colors reflecting on his black armor that gives us that really cool sort of cyberpunk style. And again, I just wanna make sure that as I'm spraying this, all of my angles stay correct and we're maintaining that imaginary light source effect on the model. Our second blue is gonna be pants blue. This is a nice bright primary blue color and I'm just going to highlight the areas that I airbrushed with the dark blue and pick out some of the larger details just like I would any other airbrush workup on a Space Marine. It's just that we're playing with imaginary light sources of different colors and just making sure that when I'm spraying stuff, I'm not breaking my rules. So anything that's purple pink is from the bottom up on the left side and anything that's blue is from the top down on the right side. For all the metallic pieces, I'm going to pull out some scale 75 black metal and just base those in by hand. So anything that you wanna be a steel color, just base that in with our black metal. One thing to note, I'm working with a fairly limited uh, color scheme here. I'm not going to be doing a ton of different colors for all of the different pieces of his armor. If I can leave it as if it's painted black armor reflecting these light sources, I am. Got all of our steel colors blocked in and I've got a little bit of sponge here. I'm going to dip that in our black metal get rid of most of the excess paint and then do some paint chipping around his armor just to give it that weathered effect. You know, one thing I really like about the cyberpunk style is it's very high tech, but also it's sort of a lived in future. So everything is new and awesome and high tech, but it's also kind of old and shitty at the same time. Goes well with 40K. And there, he does have a few gold, uh, accent pieces like this aquila on his bolter thing and some of these skulls i am going to go in and base coat a couple of those in our bright gold just so that it's not uh nothing but our armor color in steel we want a couple of little accent pieces for our icon and symbols i'm using some light neutral gray this is a very bright off-white gray that will look like a white when contrasted with our other colors on the model. 
and it paints great so I'm just going to base in our two iron hand symbols the one on his shoulder pads and uh, go from there for the leather on his axe I'm mixing burnt red and some coal black to get a really nice dark brownish black red and we're just gonna base that in and I noticed that he has a pistol and a holster and I just went ahead and base coated that in the same color as well He's got a couple of these little parchment uh, purity seal looking things. So I've taken that light neutral gray that we had on the palette, mixed a little bit of a brown into it just to get a nice aged parchment color. And I'm gonna do two thin coats on these little purity seal things just to base those in nice and clean and leave it at that. And he's got part of his head exposed with all this uh, silver mech stuff on his head there with his like rebreather and mono eye and whatnot. So again, I'm just going to take that same parchment mixture and just that's going to be his skin tone. He's going to have some, you know, not very healthy looking skin because I'm sure that like 90% of this dude is robotic at this point. You know how the iron hands like to do. So just a couple of thin coats there using the airbrush to help it dry a little faster to get a nice pallid flesh tone for this guy. And because I forgot to do this earlier, just gonna go in and base out all of the mech stuff and robotic augments on his head in the scale 75 black metal. All right, now we're gonna go back to our magenta and I'm going to thin that out with some flow improver in the airbrush and lightly highlight over some of these areas that I have base coated in different colors. And this is to apply our colored light source to those pieces as well, because we don't want the light source only on his armor, but not on any of the other stuff that we've base coated because it would look weird. So on the ammo feeds and any other areas that are base coated over where we initially airbrushed, I'm going to lightly tint over those areas with some transparent paint in our magenta and our blue to lock back in our cool cyberpunk light sources. And I'm also going to do this on his head so that when I glue his head onto the model, the head also has those light sources reflected on it a little bit, maintaining our angles for the different colors. When you're doing this, just make sure that you're not going too hard with the paint. We want this to be a transparent coat of paint, so make sure to liberally thin that paint with some flow improvers so that when you spray it down, it's like putting a colored filter over whatever you're painting rather than trying to cover it up with paint. And before we move into the wash, I'm going to pull out some satin varnish and just airbrush that over this guy in a nice thin coat just to, you know, make sure everything is protected with the Mr. Hobby weathering oil paint, uh, oil wash stuff. Um, I have not had any problems not base coating stuff. But um, I just like to hedge my bets and make sure that everything's protected. And just like I've done in the last couple of videos, we're going to pull out the Mr. Hobby oil wash system. 
And the first things first is I cover the entire model with the oil-based solvent, and then I apply our wash. I'm starting off with the multi-black wash to create a high contrast, recessed detail wash on this model. And then I am using a clean brush that I did not apply the wash with to wick away all the excess and blend out the wash on our flat surfaces to get that nice, soft, even oil wash look. You can also use some hobby Q-tips or maybe some pieces of paper towel or something like that to help out if you just need to wick away a whole bunch of that wetness on the model uh, rather than blend it out you can use those for that i actually used a couple of q-tips on this guy during the uh, final steps to just wick away and clean up some of the areas without having to blend it and then i'm going to switch over to the stained brown this is a nice kind of rusty brown color um, like an oily, rusty brown color. And I'm going to put that on a lot less than the multi-black and just put that on around different areas and blend that in. And what that's going to do is give us sort of a almost rusty, grimy, brownish tint into some of the armor plates and details to help get that lived-in future look. And like I said, sometimes using some Q-tips is the way to go just to make sure that there's no wetness uh, anywhere. The one downside of using the brushes to blend things is you do have a lot of residual solvent that kind of stays in the model and keeps diluting stuff. But with the Q-tips, you can just sort of blend it, but it's also wicking away any excess to make sure that you don't have to go back and redo the same area multiple times. After that, I'm going to get this ultra matte varnish out and we're going to do a light coat of that varnish on the model. Sometimes with the oil wash system, you can have some oily residue left in the model that makes normal acrylic paints not want to stick to it. So a nice little matte varnish just helps the painting process going forward and protects our oil wash system from getting rubbed off. And now we're going to do some detail edge highlights going back to the same magenta that we had before. I mixed a little bit of white into it for some of these edge highlights just to pop them out a little bit more. And so the idea again is just to maintain the rules of our imaginary light sources. So on any bottom edges that are around where the light source is reflecting off of his black armor, I'm going to create some magenta edge highlights just to lock that effect in and kind of pop out any details that need to be defined better. And now we're going to do the blue. So I've got our same pants blue. I mixed a little bit of white into it just so that it would pop out a little bit more. And I'm going to go in and do the same thing that we did with the magenta, except still keeping to our imaginary light sources. It's going to be a lot of the top edges and corners and hard places where that light would be reflecting. And the blue light source is a little bit stronger. I didn't really intend for that when I was doing this. But just the way that it end up working after the airbrushing is that more of the model has the blue light source, thus it's stronger, which means I have more blue edges to highlight on the model. And we did do some paint chipping earlier, so I'm not going to be doing full edges. I'm going to be just covering little 
parts of each edge around where the paint chipping is so you can still see the, the paint chipping and it looks realistic. All right, now we're gonna do his power axe. I've got some Soylent Green from Pro Acryl here. And I have based out the axe blade in just a matte black so that we have a nice dark background to build our glowy power effect gradient on top of. And I'm just going to alternate some different patches of the axe blade to give it that sort of modulating look that I like with my energy weapons. After that, I'm going to go to bright yellow green. This is our, you know, scorpion green, necrotite green, stand-in color. Really bright yellow green, and we're just going to lightly highlight on top of those glowy parts. A little bit less so than the first time, just so we can see some of that soylent green peeking through, and that's going to create our glowy power weapon gradient, whatever you want to call it. And after that, I've mixed a little bit of white into our bright yellow green, and we're just going to barely highlight those little glowy areas right on the edge to pop it out one last time. That's gonna give us that almost white hot power weapon glow. And then I've just taken a little bit of that same paint out from the airbrush onto my palette, and we're gonna use that to do some clean edge highlights and some little shiny scratchy marks on the blade just to make it look like a polished weapon that is glowing with energy. I'm going to grab some of our golden yellow and there's a couple of other little mech pieces on this model like this little arc welding claw thingy and a uh, lamp up on its shoulder pad that I want to have a glow effect on like a light source. So I'm going to very carefully and slowly build up a yellow glow on these two areas, making sure that I'm not over spraying a whole ton because we don't want to mess up our uh, you know, cyberpunk light sources. And on his leg here, I am going to do a little bit of a glow effect hitting his uh, shin guard and a little bit on the collar of that lamp. So that way there is a little bit of OSL there, but not a whole lot. I'm very, very uh, conservative with how much of that paint I'm putting on the model, not to overdo it. Then I've added some white to our yellow and just like our power weapon, I'm going to highlight our glow effect just a little bit less so to get that white light effect for the arc welder in that lamp. Then I'm going to some bold pyrrole red for the uh, lens, targeting lens thing he's got right next to his lamp. Being careful not to overspray onto our lamp itself because this is supposed to be like a dull red, sort of like a hazard light where it's not actually putting out a whole ton of reflective light. You can just tell that it's on with a very dull glow. I'm also doing that for his uh, cyber eye on the headpiece there. And to highlight that, I've mixed a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white into our red just to create that sort of artificial red light highlight color. And I'm going to very carefully highlight those same two lenses with the airbrush, making sure not to just blast color all over the model. We want just a little bit right on the top there. And I've taken that color, put some on the palette here, added a couple of more drops of white, and we're just going to do some little shine marks on these lenses to complete the effect. Okay, we're ready for his base. I've got some dark neutral gray, and I'm just going to base coat out 
the uh, materials on his base. He comes standing on some kind of like I-beam thing that's kind of half buried in the ground. And I'm just going for a really dark asphalt sort of, you know, cyberpunk terrain kind of look here. I don't really care what the base has on it because I want it to be contrasting to our light sources. So I'm not going to uh, paint it as dirt or whatever. I'm just going to imagine this is some dark alleyway in a hive city. And then I'm going to base out that I-beam with some uh, black metal, just so we know that it's a metal I-beam that he's standing on. After that's dry, I'm going to take a mid-tone gray and we're just going to lightly dry brush over the texture on his base just to pick out a little bit of the detail, but not too, too bright because we don't want the uh, details on the base to be what people are looking at. Just We want it to just look like some, some dark city street, dark asphalt kind of stuff. That's what we're going for. And after that's done, we're going to go back to our magenta and our blue and do some light OSL kind of on the ground around the areas that are keeping with our directional light sources so that way it carries over onto the base as well and kind of completes the look. And here he is, he's all done. Gotta say, I really like how this model turned out. Like I said, I'm by no means an expert on this kind of painting. I think this is the first model I've ever attempted it on. But uh, I'd say for a first try, it looks pretty cool. I'm pretty proud how this model came out. And if you like this model, make sure to catch me over on Twitch because this painted model will be up for grabs next week on a raffle on my Twitch live show. So make sure to catch that show.